Hi there, and welcome to the Electric Vicuna podcast, original audio drama from 12 years of productions. I'm Jack Ward. Well, I've always been a faithful spoken word listener. You won't catch me dead tuned into a pop rock radio station. I've also been an avid performer of music. I learned the piano at an early age, picked up the drums, tenor sax, trumpet, and of course the guitar, and now the ukulele. True to type, though, my favorite music depends on thoughtful lyrics, even those story song ballads. But I had this adventurous theme music in my head since I was a teen. Music that would eventually become the Biff Straker March. I think the most heated discussions I had with my friend and music aficionado Sharon B was convincing her to use this music out of my head instead of her own captivating soundtrack. The original theme of Biff isn't in tonight's show. I didn't have time to put together the music when I found this old universe series of scripts. Like Red Panda, Biff began as more of a parody of Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, even Dan Dare stories, but he's become something larger. Come season 11, expect to see an entirely new Biff Straker with a remade universe. But still, the same old lots and lots of action. But for now, I'm happy to introduce to you Spaceways, starring Biff Straker if this is your first time. But if it isn't, here's your last chance to listen before we go forward to the new universe. <laughs> you to put on your lab coat, Mr. Straker. Uh, sorry, Doc, but I left it at my residence. <laughs> and you just happened to have a barbecue, apron. Eh, well, there was this get-together in the ladies' wing, and they needed a cook. Never mind! I hope you realize you are only here as a personal favor to your guidance counselor. Your marks in physics are abysmal, the only chance this side of hell, or Western University, you have of passing is by getting a practical mark in these experiments I'm conducting. Uh, fair enough, Doc. Uh, what are we cooking today? First, we aren't cooking anything today. Dr. Fairmount and I are working on a new power source from a synthetic nuclear reaction. Nuclear. <clears throat> and secondly, don't call me Doc. You may have all the wits of a cartoon rabbit, but that won't help you here. I'm Dr. Bester, or Professor Bester, or just Doctor. Uh, okay. Okay, but a synthetic nuclear reaction, wouldn't that be dangerous? <laughs> Mr. Straker, do you honestly think that I'd allow you anywhere near a potentially volatile experiment? These materials are just... Glucose, fructose, pectin, sodium chloride, citric acid... But acid is, isn't that dangerous. Actually, it's more like raspberry jam and common table salt. Uh, I guess you're right there, Doc. I'm with Dr. Vester. What do you need first? 
Uh, get that citrical diglyceride. Uh, the, um, the red stuff over there. And stir it in with the jam. Sure thing, Doctor. As Biff turns to find the appropriate vial of liquid, Lady Fate delivers our hero a disastrous rebuff. Choosing one of three vials, Biff dumps the liquid into the jelly. However, our noble knight of the football scene is colorblind, and seeing green, not red, Biff makes an ignorant guess, choosing instead the unstable mixture of Crest toothpaste and melted green gummy bears. Not that one, you idiot! <laughs> The resulting repercussion sets off a chain reaction in London, Ontario, where Dr. Boris Glinthart is working on his own raspberry marmalade synthetic nuclear power source. The University of Western Ontario disappears in a loud sonic boom. Whoops. Oh. Oh, darn. And the fiery flash! Vegetation within 100 miles of both blast sites are transformed into a raspberry goo. Several cooking mom and pop establishments are driven to financial ruin with the resulting glut on the jam market. But what has happened to our noble hero? As he perished in this brief chase moment with Lady Luck, stand by for the continuation of Spaceways and Biff! Straighter! Now, return with us to Spaceways! Starring Biff Straighter! When last we left our hero, Biff had accidentally set off a synthetic thermal nuclear explosion that destroyed both Guelph and Western universities, causing mass panic, horrendous loss of life, and a new trend of strawberry jam bottom lawn furniture. Our story takes us now into the far future, to the 124th century, to be exact, in the year 123,357. A man and a woman in white jumpsuits and wearing bright Star Alliance badges are studying a silent form on a hospital bed. Electronic medical scanners and stasis beams regulate the prone figure's breathing and life signs. Let us close in on the scene. Now! W what Where? Yes, young man. You have had a nasty knock and your head knocking. His neural pathways look blunted, Professor. He must have suffered a massive head trauma. No, Commander. Look at the reading. They're showing that his neural net is not fully developed. Creighton, foes of the nebula. You can't mean. Look for yourself, Commander. What's that? Looks like a TV set showing the night sky. Some pretty stars. <laughs> but it's a little overcast. Not a lot to see. It's a video encephalitic enhancer, sir. It's displaying all the electrical energy of your brain's neurons firing. Hmm. Looks a little fuzzy. That's what I was saying. Normally, young man, the screen should be lit up with blinking neurons. It shows an active and curious mind. But in your case, I count... 16. 17. Mm, 18. Yeah, yeah. 18 active neurons at one time. You must find it difficult just blinking and breathing and thinking at the same time. S slow down, Einstein. You've lost me. Another neuron went dark. Careful, Professor, we're losing him. By the rings of Mars is most perplexing. Never you mind, Gorgeous. You and your ethnic friend here have saved my life, and I'm grateful. As my old pappy used to say, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. These neuron fellows will show up. Now where is that night sky? I think we could both use a walk in the moonlight. 
I don't believe it. To be so completely and utterly oblivious to what we're talking about, and still make some facile and obtuse attempt at a sexual parley with me. I know, gorgeous. I have a way about me. Now about that starlit walk. What? No! No, he's impossible! Look! It's a security grid! We all doom it! Doom it! What is it, Professor? Those heat signatures on the electro invigoration life detector later. They say are the patterns of Craden warriors! Then there's no time to lose. Sir, don't get up. You've been dead for more than a hundred thousand years. You're liable to get a cramp. Ah, oh, don't worry about me, gorgeous. I've been dead before. You have? Well, yes, you just told me that. Never mind. Never mind that now. I'm Biff. Biff Straker, and if we're going to stop these Norwegians, we better get going now. Cradens, Biff. I'm Professor Thermopylae, and this is Commander Angela Deegan of the Star Alliance. I'm not familiar with that club. Are you in the Student Union building? What happened to your accent? Student Union building? A accent? You don't belong to a cult, do you? Not that there's anything more wholesome than a good old-fashioned cult. But I joined the Cult of the Dead Cow once, and let me tell you... They're in the compound. Professor, stay back with Biff. I'll draw their fire. Would you believe it had nothing to do with cows at all? Five Graydon troops or five hundred, I'll not yield. Professor, out the escape tunnel! Look at Angel. She's pinned down. You can't just leave her to repel those robots alone. She's... She's just a girl. Stay down, Biff. The commander is the best trained Nova Command trooper we have. She'll be fine. Crawl with me back behind these consoles to the emergency escape pods or we'll be captured. Sorry, Professor. Crawling was not on my class calendar at school. I just... need to grab this wrench. There. That's got it. No! Beef! Biff. That is the release clamps to this pod. In case of an emergency, this entire medical bay can be released into space! Away from Nova Command! Well, you could have. But the sounds of Biff's protestations are muffled by the icy clutch of space! Before our hero can react, and perhaps thankfully so, the entire medical bay module is released and separated from the main housing of Nova Command. Biff watches helplessly as a glass plating between himself and Commander Angela Deegan slides solidly into place, and the room in which our man of the 20th century has been standing goes weightless. Biff is thrown like a cork as the room tumbles end over end. Precious oh. air leaking oh. from the unsealed cracks into the black vacuum of the endless void. Is this the end of our hero? And what of Professor Thermopylae or Commander Angela, who even now slumps in the unfeeling metallic grip of the fearsome Kraken marauders as they haul her away? Stay tuned for the continuation of Biff. Striker and Spaceways! Friends of Nova Command! Danger lurks at every corner for Biff Straker in his strange new life on the Spaceways! When we last left our hero, Kraden Marauders had taken over Nova Command. Biff had tried to fight back and had accidentally released a whole section of the Met Lab. Tumbling out of control in space, Biff is bashed and battered against the walls of the discarded pod. The air slowly leaks from the broken seals as the dashing hero of yesteryear struggles to understand the unfamiliar control panels and technology of the 124th century. The tiny pod begins tumbling into the vicinity of one of the 27 moons that orbit Earth. 
caught in the gravitational grip of Avia, the planet of the Falcon Men, heat slowly builds, burning the armor of the discarded medical bay, cooking it into a single brilliant star in the heavens. But what a beef inside! Let us go check upon our champion of the cosmos now! By the western hells is hot. The hull's aflame. I'm out! <clears throat> Every time I touch the outer walls, I burn myself. Ow! Oh, man, that's hot. Ow! Yes, that's too hot. Ow! Can't... can't see the portal, just flame. This medical center must be made of some... flame retardant material. Can't see what's burning us. Could these Norwegians have flamethrowers? But... Angel! I almost forgot. Great day! Ow! Oh, it's still hot. That sweet girl sacrificed herself for the professor and I, and... Where did he go? Yes, I remember now. He left out that secret passageway. Perhaps if I can... No. It's no good. It's sealed. Whatever way the professor left, he made certain I couldn't follow. Wait. What's that? Outside. The fire. It's slowing. I can see... It looks like, yes, clouds. We must be flying. How is that possible? But it's true, and I can feel the, the movement slowing, and the gravity is, is, is back. No need to cling on to the consoles anymore. Can walk on own two feet. There. Outside. Flame's completely out now. And it feels like we're hovering. Hovering in the air. Hovering in the air with, without a balloon or... Great Guelph's ghost, what was that? Some beast flew by the portal. No, not a beast. A man. There's a man on the wing. I mean, th th there's a wing on that man. I mean, there's a man with wings. Two men. Three. And one, he's... Riding a chariot with two great horses, the color of the sun. They aren't hooked together directly, more on a loose tether that allows them to fly, each of them with their own tremendous wings. Imagine that. What's that? Someone knocking on the door. If it's the Norwegians, I'll give them a fight. But where? Here, that's, yes. That's where it's coming from. From the portal, the prof slid out of, just need to throw my back into the hole. <laughs> there. That's got it. Now, let's see. Hello in there. It seems you are in need of assistance. Stand back, Agent of Norway. I may not have a gun, but this pipe in my hand will make short work of you if you try anything funny. <laughs> Little wingless warrior, my people are keeping your barge aloft in the sky. Without our help, you'll be food for the lion dogs below, my mountain. Hmm. Then I owe you my life. Great, old, large, winged, bearded stranger. Guy? My name is Tal. I am the rightful jinn of the entire clouded lands of Osprey. My wingmen are cool and crawled. Our hunting flock has your part in the grip of a harpoon nullivator. Harpoon what, Peter? There's many of the things we can talk about, my man. Will you come with me to my nest? Can't help Angel and the Professor hanging here. Thanks for the invite, my good man, and me without a kegger to offer in return. Kegger? Grasping Talon's feathery hand, Biff maneuvers to the chariot that hovers carefully. The two magnificent pegasi flapping their wings in perfect unison for the slow movement of the pod. Our Percival of the past is uneasy beside the great Jin, war leader of the Falcon Men of Osprey. The Falcon Men cheer loudly as they release the strange harpoon that had pierced the wall of the lab pod 
The strange metal that kept it defying gravity no longer has power. And Biff watches the discarded bay once again continue its spiraling spin until it disappears below the clouds. The sound of its final thunderous crash lost against the winds of the moon of Avia. Never has our hero been witness to such amazing events. And it is in wonderment that he speaks to the sturdy Jin Talon. Now. Never have I been witness to such amazing events, Talon. This is a part of the Earth I've never seen on the Discovery Channel. Well, not on Earth, Biff Straker. That is why you are so wingless and helpless. Well, never mind. At least you're not the mudman of Clayuria. We are our sworn enemies. If we're not on Earth, where are we? On Avia, my friend. Home of the Falcon Men, of course. And the land of the winds. <laughs> Those clouds below. There. There. Do you see it? They hide huge mountains and rocky crevices. Don't see any farmlands. Farmlands? Are you daft, man? Maybe there's nothing but mountains. That's what makes it so beautiful. Farmlands, indeed. What would you do with farmlands, little wingless warrior? Uh... Farm? Ah! Ha 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 ha! It's an attack from the cast! The cast? Cast of what? Can't be as bad as that! I, I mean, I've heard the Broadway versions of Cats is nasty, but... The cast out, Bip Stricker! They who were cast out from their nests. They must have attacked from the sun. They live in the sun? No, Beef Straker. They fly in from the direction of the sun so we can't see them. Da! Hold on. They're forcing us down. I thought you told me that there were only mountains on this moon. Oh, ho, 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 ho. There are. I never said we'd be landing. Only going down. No! Good night! Out of the flying pod and into the fire! Down, ever down, the Falcon men are pressed by these new adversaries! As hard as they try to escape, the cast ride great griffins! Part bird, part horse, part dragon, nearly blotting out the sky above the avian warriors! It is all that Biff can do to hold tightly to the flying chariot as they continue to descend! like an out-of-control rocket through the misty gray of space. Farther and farther they fall, the harsh landscape of the mountains jutting up at Biff like a hungry maw full of misshapen teeth. Is this the end of the hero at time's end? Is this the finish of the final Frontiers football fighter? Stand by, Biff Straker and... Faceways will return. Boys and girls, men and women, the young at heart and the childish of temperament. Biff Straker is on the air! When last we left Biff, he was hurtling his way to the ground, clutching tightly to Jin Talon's flying chariot. Talon and the other winged falcon men were being forced to the ground by the cast, a band of outlaws. The mountainous terrain of the moon of Avia was spinning closer and closer to its fatal finish. Ready? Ready! For what? On three, we fly out of here, of course. The cast won't be able to maneuver so close to the ground. Fly! Talon, I don't have wings. Yes. Well, you might have reminded me of that when I came up for this plan. We want to save the... Talon, the ground! I may be Jin of the Falcon Men, but you can't expect me to come up with everything. Talon! Oh, yes, of course. Just stand still. There! Ah! 
got you! You're too heavy to keep aloft! Too much speed got to slow our... Are you alive, little wingless warrior? Yes, I can see you are. Looks like I was able to pull up enough to have us tumble into this rocky dune. Good thing it's mostly swamp. A little dirt is better than a broken wing, don't you think? <laughs> Although I am not happy about the loss of my sky chariot. You, beef, wake up! If you hit your head, it could be dangerous for you to sleep. You'll never wake up. There! Beef! Hear me! Wake up, I say! Oh, of course, baby, but next time I get to be the hall monitor... Oh, oh, my head, oh, my body. Feels like homecoming all over again. Where? Talon? Of course. The cast. Where, where are we? About five sightings from my nest. Cast brought us down close enough to my block. See? We rolled just short of this ledge. Heavens to woo you. That's one fierce drop. Aye, little wingless warrior. You make a better anchor than you do at Discus. And a good thing, too. Or we'd be tumbling down half a mile below right now. Where are the other falcon men? Or... The cast, as you call them. They must have flown past. My men will try to maneuver them closer to the tree line to gain a better vantage point. Well, we'd better be on our way. No telling if they'll be back or not. Hi, Biff Straker. Are you up to flying? Not just yet. We'd better hoof it. Hoof? Walk. I am not ready to travel coach on the Jin Talon Express anytime soon. As you wish, Biff Straker. However, I do not understand. Wigs are made for standing when feasting, dancing when drinking, and making love uh, when... Talon, uh, why are the cast so angry with the falcon men? Here, down, down here, there's a path we can follow. My people have always revered our greatest talent, Biff Straker. That of soaring in the heavens. It's what defines us. Sort of like a stereotype. What's that? Never mind. Go on. The cast are criminals. The worst kind. When someone commits vile acts against the fucking men at Gemini, those that are tried and found guilty receive the only punishment that befits them. Death. No! No falcon men may kill another. That would be barbaric. We very slowly pull out their wings, bone by bone, and send them to wander in the wilderness naked. Bone by bone? Bone by bone! They have been called the cast out. They are no longer allowed to live in civilized society with the other falcon men. Laughter can break up the worst of awkward silences. Uh, okay. Uh, and the falcon women? Falcon women? Are the cast forbidden to commingle with the falcon women? Especially the falcon women. Well, you might have said that. You only said they are no longer allowed to live in civilized society with the other falcon men. Falcon men is what we call ourselves. It's not gender specific. Where I come from, that's a very touchy subject. Only after a long look at how we use language, mankind evolved to include women in their everyday speech. Who? What? Who has evolved to include women in their everyday speech? Mankind. I... I say that they have. What? What? Hold still, Jin Talon of the Far Nest, if you wish life! In the cliffs... Just above us, men with spears. Aye, Biff Stricker. It is the cast and the trap. 
What are you doing? Uh, raising my hands. Whatever for? It's usually the thing we Earthmen do when we surrender. Oh, I thought you saw something in the sky. Not exactly the time for cloud watching, Talon. Jim Talon, I await your answer. Shall the great stories of your chicks speak the deeds of Jim Talon without knowing their sire's final fate? Go, Talon. You've got children or hatchlings or whatever to think about. Fly away now while you still can. No, little wingless warrior. We do not leave our branch brothers to perish alone. Unless... Yes, yes. You would wish me to kill you first. We give up. Death by a friend is far better than perishing in the cages of the cast. We yield to the cast. Well, they win this round. But we'll have another chance, Talon, I promise you. Actually, Biff Straker, this is pretty much it. The outlaws known as the cast quickly bind Biff and Talon with thorny weed rope made from the uneven grounds of Avia. By Craw, their leader... Huge and scarred with one merciless pale-colored eye, Craw was blinded from a blade's cut, leaving a large gash down his cheek. All day they walk in the rough and mountainous terrain. Exhausted from his trials, Biff stumbles, at times nearly falling to his death down what appear to be endless chasms. But an inner strength drives our hero from yesteryear, and he is drawn to his feet and prodded by spear point ever onwards. The sun lowering in the sky. Enough! We'll make camp! Here. But, sir, we are close to the Torby's cave. The Torby's cave, yes. Place the prisoners by the campfire and round up a hunting party. I can't say I much like the look in Craw's eye. Me neither, Talon. Don't be so featherless in your concerns, little wingless warrior. We're not finished yet. What? No. Sorry, Talon, I was thinking about a little girl I know who's got her hands full right now with some dastardly Norwegians. Norwegians? What manner of beasts are they? They sound absolutely fierce. Well, with other cell phones and hot tubs, they can get cranky. But their heads, they were strange. Hot tubs? Torture device. Maybe I've got my Nordic people mixed up. Is hot tubs finished? No, Bistraker! Not finished! Never finished, I tell you! You're right, it's Swedish. At any rate, they wore lobsters in their helmets like their heads were replaced. Lobsters? In their helmets? I do not know this lobster creature you speak of. But were these beings that took your child uh, encased like flightless men in metal? No, not my child. They took this girl. Angel. They took Angel, and yeah, they look like robots, all except their helmets. In their helmets there were lobsters, and they spoke with high voices. It must be the Kraton! If your... your Angel is with them, then we have greater worries than the cast. I'm afraid she's not my angel, Talon. Leastways, not that she knows yet. She's tough for a sorority girl. Belongs to the Novell cheerleading commanders, or something like that. Nova Command? Goodness, you do speak in a strange tongue, my friend. But if I hear you right, your angel is in Nova Command, the elite force of the Star Alliance. If the Creedon have attacked Nova Command, they have indeed become more brazen than any of us have known. And all could be lost. All? I don't understand, Talon. Enough of this endless packing! Your pod is without its gin. Talon, you're finally within my grasp. And I shall feed your entrails to... The Mudman. Now see here. And you, Earthman. You have wandered into the wrong skies today, and you shall perish as sport for my flightless fighters. Sport? Now you're talking. If it's sport you want, cry, it's sport you've got. Biff. What will it be? Twenty-one? Two on one? Maybe you want to try a little keep away. Biff. How about dodgeball? Freeze tag? You name it, I... Biff! Yes? I do 
not think he means sport in the same Enough! Is the beast ready? Hi, Jim Crow! It waits in the circle! Take him! Don't worry, Talon. I'm sure whatever this is, I can reason with it. You brave wingless warrior! I just don't Now, Biff, remember your training. A smile and a firm handshake makes the best impression. What are they doing with those spears? They're prodding someone out of the cave. Those pointy ends can't feel good. They're liable to upset him if they aren't. Great warriors of the cast! We who have been removed from our branch brothers to carry an oath between ourselves. And this is to take back what is rightfully ours? The skies do not belong to the falcon men alone. Uh, falcon women. And today, in celebration of our great victory in capturing the cruel Talon, I present you all a gift. We have captured the most deadly predator crawling upon the craggy rocks of our homeland. I give you the Tor Beast! Great day! What hideous beast are they releasing upon me? What monstrous creature have these fiends cornered for my demise? What? What? Hey! It's a basset hound! Silence! We will now watch the creature feed. Feed? It looks like it has bronchitis. Craw. Oh. Not to complain, I don't know what this is, but it can't be. Silence! I will have silence! Lay witness to the horror, for none have seen the beast feed and live to tell the tale! <laughs> no, he's scratched up a flea's cry, I mean honestly. Careful, he's a vicious terror. Stand back, men, he's... grooming... For a killing lunch. Lunch? Lunch? Oh, that little creature looks like it can barely stand. Lean, I can believe, but lunch? Its deviousness is utter. Its vile horrors can only be guessed upon. Even now, it loves you all. Stand back, men! It is said that the Torby spits its own poisoned blood upon its victims! Probably undigested bones. See! See! The earther knows death is coming! He fears the creature devours the very bones of its victims! Raw, how do you know it even is a Torbeast? Have you seen one? Don't be ridiculous, Falcon Man. Of course I haven't. No one sees a tall beast and lives. Then how do you know this is a tall beast? Foolish feather brain. While you soared thoughtless in the sky, I have tracked the tall beast's habits to this lair. I have sent my men in to get him, and they found the beast within. I bow to your logic, Craw. Very well, Biff, old friend. I bid you farewell. May your spirit find wings in the next life. I only wish I could have aided you better in this one. But Talon... Crawl speaks truly, wingless warrior. No one survives in a battle against a tor beast. And if this is its lair... Talon, it's... Then you are doomed. Doomed! But don't worry. My hatchlings will speak your deeds. My branch brethren will not rest until we can safely... It's a basset hound. Look, see this stick. Biff, it's no good. A piece of wood is barely large enough to throw. It can't possibly harm a tour beast. Good boy. That's it. Now fetch the stick. <laughs> Come on, get the stick, good boy. Well, okay. Look at the stick then. There he goes. Stand up. Great. You're certain this is a tall beast? No, no care for your Absolutely, ears, sir. We found it in the lair. Except... Oh, see, Talon, you're tripping his own ears for crying out loud. Well, 
It's probably nothing. The dog can barely stand. He's so weak from home. Go on. You can tell me anything. You, you might be mad. I won't home. be mad. <laughs> Who likes to you be promise you won't be mad? Ears. I promise. Oh, I be won't be mad. Cool. See? See? You say that, but I can tell you're getting mad. Tell guy? me! Okay, well, well, now, okay, now roll over. we know this is the Tor Beast because I we found the over. creature on a mound of bones nearly as high as your head. Roll over. Well, well roll that's over promising, at least. You would think so. We did. But... Okay, you can stand up now. But... But I said, what? I sent 20 warriors down to the south passageway of the cave and... Yes, they never returned! They... They never returned! See, I told you you'd be mad. <laughs> Okay, I think, I think we can take a breather now. But, Biff, why did you not release me? I, I could have flown out of harm's way. No time, my friend. That creature was devouring everything in sight. Have you ever seen anything as horrible? Indeed, most unpleasant. I think we've seen the last of the car. Did you see how it swallowed Kra whole? That's got to be terrible to digest. What do you mean? Big boned like Craw was. That's got to stick to the monster's gut for a while. Slow down, Talon. What? This way. I think I see a light. Perhaps we can find another exit from this cavern. So I might see the blessed sky again. I don't understand. What's got to stick in his craw? Talon! Meanwhile, back at Nova Command, Commander Angela Deegan finds herself in less than stellar circumstances. Commander Angela Deegan of the Star Alliance, and you will get no other information from me. Wait a minute. That's not light. It's the sun. And I'm standing on... What is this? It looks to be a sandbar of some kind, by a body of water. Welcome back, Earther female. I trust you find your surroundings comfortable, and to your liking... Raiden, I remember now. You attack Nova Command. You will not succeed in taking over the military might of the Star Alliance so easily. You speak as if you have a choice, Earther female. You humans better get used to living under the law of the crustacean. It is our birthright to rule you and all the stars in the heavens. <laughs> what is this? Where are my clothes? My regulation boots? Yes. Do you like our simulation? Human breeding stock find this tide pool more to their liking. Our researchers have called this a... Uh... Where did I put that memo? I swear I would lose my head if it wasn't... Oh, here it is. A nice day at beach. Let us be part of everything, from the ocean shore to the altar you are wearing. Well, it's barely able to cover. It's called a two-piece bathing suit. It polka-dotted, itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny, bikini, as per our research. Your dermis has been softened to give you a maximized skin discoloration. More properly known as... Where is Dr. Thermopylae and that moron I was with when you took us? More properly known as a copper tone tan. Your nose is painted white with a specialized zinc formulae compound. Where are they? Bring slaves are not permitted to know the details of their release. I'm being released? You have been released. 
Released from the dangers of independent thinking, females who believe they can co-mingle with male workers in other than pure mating rituals are often confused with ideas of responsibility and individual creativity. A dangerous mix for society, don't you agree? So I'm released. Correct. To be kept here. Correct. What you're saying is that I'm removed from a place where I had the freedom to do as I wish, to come live here completely against my will to serve as some kind of concubine for the Creighton army, and you consider that to being released? <laughs> Correct. Don't you understand that the concept of release implies free will, and free will allows us to be able to choose our own destiny? If you really want to liberate me, then you must release me so I can choose your way or another. If I choose the Creighton way of life, only then will you truly know whether you have superior philosophical reasoning or not. If you do not allow someone free will, you don't know if people are following you through force or from genuine personal belief in your cause. And your definition of the term, to be released, is only a tool for propaganda. <coughs> Yes. Now to Just see. messing with you. Human humor is so immature. You are correct, however. We use the term released to make you feel more comfortable. It's a propaganda tool. Choice here is a pretense. Now, go with the other humans and play beach ball volleyball. No. I don't want to play beach ball volleyball. You have no choice. I will check on the mini incineration unit. When I return, you will be playing beach ball volleyball. Mini incineration unit? Barbecue. Apparently, someone has left the hot dogs on too long. You will play beach volleyball now. All the moons of the earth. What are they incinerating? And what miserable creature is called a dog? with you, beef streaker. Charlie, well, he was going to be stomped by that tour beast. I can hardly let the little pooch alone to fend for himself. But he looks as if he's near death as it is. Was he wounded? No. Little guy is just tuckered out from all the excitement. I thought you said the light was this way. I think we're going down, not up. We've been traveling for a couple of hours downwards. That would mean that we're not much closer to the surface. Unless, of course, you have a China on AVR. Beef Straker, a pooch of yours hasn't rallied itself up enough to raise a shout, let alone get excited. What's a China? He's tired, that's all, Talon. And it's common knowledge if you dig far enough, you'll arrive on the other side of the earth in a place called China. Firstly, I think we've had a tunnel like this one all the time. How else could you get Chinese food delivered so quickly? You have a wise and deductive mind, Beef Straker. But I have no answers for you. Ah, there. Do you see what I see? Well, wind me up the Whipple Tree, an underground base, those lights, that machine drilling down into the ground. Is not the Pokemon men machinery of that much I can assure you, wingless warrior? What creatures would have such a base down here? There. My eyes do not deceive me. Looks like that power generator is tapping directly into the core of Avia for geothermal energy. If it's not your people, Talon, then we'd better check it out. Lead the way, Biff Straker. I will follow. Just down this way. Careful. It's a bit of a drop. Those buildings are immense. Larger than they appear from back up on that ledge. And I thought you said you had excellent sight. Apologies, little wingless warrior. The darkness limits my vision. Petrified. Excuse me, did you say something? It was not me, Pistrika. 
but an unseen Petrify and heal. Never! Maybe we shouldn't be so hasty. Raising your arms again? Are you surrendering? Illumination! My eyes! Jack, sing! Join the conga line at the beach party, submitting to more cruelties under the watchful gaze of the Kragans? What has happened to Dr. Thermopylae, and what's with his accent? Has Charlie the dog made his last whimper? Hold tight, friends of Nova Command! Steal your courage! Don't miss the next exciting episode of this electrifying subscription feature, brought to you in... Radiographic sound! Return next time to Biff Straker and the Space Wave! Biff Straker and Space Waves was created and written by Jack J. Ward. The part of the narrator and of Jin Talon of the Lands of Osprey was performed by Pasha Ebrahimi. Angela Deegan was played by Eva Madden, and Manfred Onward was Professor Thermopylae, the undefeatable craw. Stick in his cry, don't get it. The cold calculating Creighton Gleek, and the voice of Boris Glinthart. Ryan Horn played Mudman Number One and the Cast Lieutenant, and Jeff Brown was Doctor Vester. Oh yeah, whatever happened to him anyway? Hmm. Nuclear jam. Don't touch that. Jack J. Ward is Stephen Biff Straker. Shadowlands theme music was created by Christopher Moreno. Incidental theme musics and scores by Sharon B. Fowler. Editing by Paul Patterson and Jack J. Ward. Whoa, deja vu. I've heard that name before. Shadowlands, effects, and digital landscape by Andrew Dorfman. Hey, I'm warning you, don't touch that. It's hot. Shadowlands is directed and produced ah. by Jack J. Ward and Andrew Dorfman. Man, and that is hot. recorded in the sound studios of CKDU 97.5 FM in Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's too hot. Shadowlands Theater is a work of fiction. Ooh. All dramatic material within is for entertainment purposes only. That's way Any too references hot. to real events businesses or locales are intended only to give the fiction a sense of reality and authenticity oh, oh. and not to describe any actual conduct. Man, any hot. character's resemblance to an actual person either living or dead is entirely coincidental. For more information on the Shadowlands go to our website at www.shadowlandstheater.com Two minutes oh, you've lost me Einstein. That's the The name Biff is an embarrassing story. I worked at a camp for the mentally handicapped for many summers. My last summer there, I was out tripping director. I started a couple of weeks before anyone else, volunteering my time to get the camp ready. We had a group of volunteers helping to build us a new craft cabin, and while I was parking the pickup, the emergency brake slipped and it rolled back, nearly running me over. The volunteers, who had seen this debacle, thought I must have been a little light in the brain pan. I found out later from a rather charitable lass. Apparently they had nicknamed me Biff to try to pigeonhole me as attractive, but not very bright. Considering that all my life it was my brains that people noticed most about me, I was a little too floored to be even slightly embarrassed about the remarks on my physicality. In fact, I was a little hurt.
I guess the joke was on them in the end, because the dumb guy got the most attractive girl in the group. Still, it left a special place in my heart for Stephen Biff Straker, the strong-jawed hero who may not be the brightest, but certainly has his own heart in the right place, too. Please join us next week as we go back to one of our Seven Deadly Sin scripts, Greed, Ghosts of the Present. Until then, I'm Jack Ward for Electric Vicuna Productions. Keep listening, and good night.